gosh, this dude is so much <laughs> Good morning guys, it is just about 4 a.m. Grabbing the pack and uh, headed to the stand. Typically I'm up at camp so I kind of have my routine and my timings all dialed in. I'm not sure how long it's gonna take to drive and do the hike so I'm trying to get an early start just to make sure I don't show up too late. It's not typical that the deer are moving out there until a little later anyways but I definitely want to get set up and let things settle down. Typically around 8 or 9 is, is when the bucks start to show up. So quick drive, quick hike, and we'll be in the tree stand hoping that a big buck comes by. And by the way, today is August 24th. Chipping away at this channel one video at a time, one day at a time, man. I'm loving it. Hope you guys are enjoying it. I just love documenting my hunts. I'm sure many of you know that I've been doing it since I was a kid and I just love sharing it with you guys. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. Hope BMAC and Casey are getting out to Oregon safe and sound. And uh, like I said, I'll see you guys at the tree stand. All right, made it to the tree stand. I took my time just because I didn't want to get super sweaty. But uh, it's 5.37 a.m. I think it'll just take me about 10, 15 minutes to change, climb the tree stand and get everything set up so it's a uh, perfect weather it's a nice day the uh, wind is going down the canyon which is perfect because typically the deer are above me and this last week I've been coming to my stand from above um, from deer camp and this time I came from below so fingers crossed that that helps I don't know I just hope that that uh, big buck comes in so we'll just uh, Wish me luck, guys. I'm gonna get my harness on, get my warm clothes on, and uh, we're gonna have a good sit, especially because we got this cushion, this big old memory foam. It's like a car seat type of cushion. Thanks a lot, Ben. And uh, got some new First Light gear that I'm gonna try today too, so pretty stoked on that. Got a new addition to the stand. A nice little bow hanger. I'm a left-handed shooter, so I'll just take my right hand right here, slide that off. I can get my bow without much movement, so that'll be nice. I won't have to sit it in my lap all day. I am off to the airport. Excited to go meet up with Casey and Logan, born and raised guys. But the real question is, babe, how do you feel about hunting season? No lies. Mm, it's okay. Why is it just okay? I don't know, what do you because mean? you're gone a lot. Can you guys relate? Being gone a lot during hunting season is not easy on the family life. That is a fact, particularly when you're traveling a lot and you have archery and rifle hunts. Those of you that are not married yet, the key is to find a spouse that will not only support, but encourage hunting. They yeah. may not have to go with you, they just need to appreciate your time away in the woods, right babe? Yeah, and just make sure you bring some meat home. That's right. Don't come home empty handed. Yeah. If we come home with no tags filled, that's when I hear the wrath. Because <laughs> it was basically a waste of a trip. Anyhow, we're off to the airport. Gonna go fly into Eugene. Had a couple things to take care of. And therefore, uh, I was able to bypass the drive with Casey. For the record, who loses their freaking release to their bow when you're going on a bow hunt, Casey? Come on. <laughs> killing me. Well, uh, on the way over here, I realized that I forgot a pretty important piece of equipment. That was my release. I tell you what, the Butler brothers have a tendency to misplace things. And I have been trying to convince them both. Well, Logan already has this on his keys and whatnot. Things of great importance. They make those little tile chips. that are like Bluetooth GPS devices and you put them on things of value. Casey needs to put them on things of value like his bow, his release, wallet. He already lost his keys earlier this summer. Ted. These guys, I tell you what. We had to make one quick stop before the airport. Uh, this year we decided we're gonna show kind of everything beyond just the hunt, I guess, as we document this fall doing daily videos. And some of that stuff is just real life stuff that happens. And so we are at the University of Utah Fertility Clinic 
It's my wife, Corey. This is one of those things that, I don't know, normally I probably wouldn't share, but we decided what the heck because there might be other people or couples going through the same kind of challenges that we are, but we've been married for nine years trying to have a kid and it just has not worked. There's no real answers. We've been through plenty of tests, all kinds of different steps to see if we could extend our family. And so far, it just hasn't happened. And sometimes that's the case. So today we're doing a consultation, right? What are we doing? We're gonna find out what the next steps are because <laughs> the previous steps have not worked. It's kind of scary. It's uh, it's frustrating, it's disappointing, but it's real. That's kind of where we're at. The final step in the process really is IVF, which is uh, in vitro fertilization. I don't know all the details, but we're about to learn about that. It's expensive, it's uh, scary, Scary. <laughs> it's time consuming. There's a lot of stuff, particularly for the woman in the equation. At the end of the day, man, that's just where we have kind of fallen. Everybody said, when you move to Utah, it's in the water. Like you're gonna have <laughs> kids. It's just, everybody has kids here. And unfortunately, that has not happened yet. So we're about to walk in, go visit with Dr. Peterson. Uh, he's been working with us for the last year or so. Again, just. We haven't had that luck, so we'd love to have a kid. Just one is cool. I'm cool with one, right? Or yeah. two. <laughs> I think you're really here today because you want to reinforce the timeline um, so that we don't have a baby due in the middle of um, hunting season next year. So I think that's really why he's here. I think as soon as he sees the timeline, um, he'll be in an Uber to the airport and he will <laughs> ditch me. <laughs> we, have a, we have a quick turn here. A small window. But it was important to be here for me. And there's no doubt in a perfect world, we could schedule it out to have a child not during hunting season, but it is what it is. Uh, we learned a long time ago what you envision in your life when you get married, and uh, we're gonna get married, we're gonna have a kid, we're gonna do this, that doesn't always work out. And so at this point in time, we'd be fortunate just to have a child at all. And so whenever that would happen, we'll figure it out, we'll make it work. Uh, Casey's daughter, Braley, was born in the middle of September. Not ideal for <laughs> hunting, but you know what? He makes it work. And uh, that's kind of what, what's going on today. So we're about to walk in, let you know what the doctor says, but we just said, what the heck, let's share it. I'm sure somebody out there watching this can relate, been through that. The more that we've learned about it, the more people we have been exposed to that have been dealing with the same thing. And for whatever reason, it doesn't get talked about a whole lot. You hear a lot about other people sharing their stories of having a kid, but you don't necessarily hear about some of the trials and tribulations of people that can't, you know? Again, we're trying to just show what happens throughout the season, good, bad, or indifferent, and sometimes that's weird personal family stuff. That's kind of the motivation for talking about it today. Right, babe? That's right. <laughs> this building is, unfortunately... It's been visited way too many yeah, times. Yeah, we've been here a lot. <laughs> been here a lot. It's a 40 minute wait to get into this back room. Doctors' offices, they uh, really make you wait, don't they? Which is the worst, too. You don't want to be here in the first place, then you gotta wait for 40 minutes. <laughs> Not ideal. All the tools. <laughs> Good morning. It is uh, day number. I lost track. It is August 24th, and we are en route to our final destination, which is Roseburg, Oregon. We got some stops along the way. We just left Bend. I'm gonna quit talking for a sec. Just look at this. Just look at it. I'm gonna look at the road. I'm gonna get all the last minute items that we forgot, and then we're gonna pick up a package at the airport in Eugene, and then we're gonna continue our trek down south and meet up with the boys from uh, Born and Raised. We will be in camp tonight and we will have our bows in hand tomorrow morning. Opener of the Oregon archery elk season starts. And it is also the beginning of born and raised the land of the free 2.0. And we couldn't be more excited to be coming back down here to hunt with these guys. It was probably one of our favorite hunts last year we did. And just a good group of people with common goals and sharing our experiences with you guys. So we appreciate you guys following along so far. And if you would like, continue to follow along because it's just gonna get better and it's gonna be more fun. We're gonna laugh, we're gonna cry, we're gonna experience a lot of, uh, a lot of different emotions, but it's gonna be an adventure. And this road is absolutely awesome.
We are coming in hot, guys. Although I did all this grocery shopping and uh, meal prep before we left, I always gotta stop and make a couple last minute purchases. Look, I stole from my buddy Chell. He's a uh, fisherman up in Alaska, commercial fisherman. And so he just got home and he sent us on our way with some fresh sockeye salmon from Alaska that he caught. Super excited about that. It was on the menu and I didn't even ask him if I could have any beforehand, but I put it on the menu anyways. And like always, Chell comes through clutch. If we can't survive for seven days with all this food, uh, probably don't need to be out in the mountains. They got to send it out in time to make my flight, which is great. What did we learn? And I'm really scared. A lot of needles. Yeah. I already said I wouldn't do the blood draw today. I'm already making excuses. Lots um. of needles, lots of shots. <laughs> Not super fun stuff. No, but it's pretty amazing what they can do. And we saw all the surgery rooms and I guess that's, not a bad thing to see him, but it's also, ugh. It's uh, not cheap either. <laughs> Definitely not cheap. One less hunt this year. Probably not going on that Alaska trip I'd hoped for. <laughs> but we got some answers. We got this pamphlet. Our first delivery is hope. There you go. But we got good news. We have good probabilities. Which, it's crazy to me that a good probability is like 35 to 40%, 47% take home baby rate. I don't know who's doing the math. That doesn't sound like great probabilities from what I've ever better known. Better than your hunting probabilities. It's certainly better than some of the tag uh, percentage draws <laughs> yeah, I mean. that we put in for. But it's crazy how many people are in those rooms. Yes. And like you said earlier, I mean, I know just so many of my friends who it just seems so easy to conceive, but then I know so many who it has not been. And um, you sit in that room and there's just all ages of people and you just, I mean, I feel like that doctor's office is just as busy as an urgent care. And there's a lot of people struggling with that. And the doctor can just run through the process like it's the ABC. So he does a lot of it. I think he said he's done 13,000 babies in his career. Yeah, that place is packed. So many dang people in there, all different walks of life, cultures, demographics, age brackets, you name it. Pretty eye-opening how many folks struggle with it. One thing about Dr. Peterson and why we chose him is that he has one of the highest success rates in Utah and he's actually in the nation. What I, why I chose him was that he doesn't, um, tries to give couples a positive outcome, but he doesn't believe in trying to make a bunch of twins and triplets just to get people pregnant. So, um, you know, ideally for us, like one or two is fine. Um, but there's a lot of doctors out there that will just go crazy just to try to have a success rate. So that's one thing I really liked about him is that that's his beliefs and, um, we don't, we don't want multiples. <laughs> no. maybe two. Just two no at one multiples. time. Two at one time. Not Brian um, and Corey so plus eight. I probably am gonna win that battle, but we'll see. So that's why I chose him is because I think he has good fundamental beliefs and there was a lot of just bad things that happen out there. Uh, fertility doctors just trying to get a success rate, so. Keep you posted on the progress. It's gonna take some time. Scheduling is gonna be the most complex part of this whole thing. Not as much for me, more for, for her. Travels a lot for work and whatnot. Trying to get it all timed out is the uh, a little bit challenging, but anyways, we're off to the airport. We'll catch up with you when we uh, land in Oregon. What's up? Welcome to Tracktown USA. You guys know you're in the capital of running. all running sports, particularly the University of Oregon. Go Ducks. One fawn all day. The fawn is just running around playing, so I don't know what the deal is, but this place has been dead since the storm. Thought giving it a couple days uh, rest would pick it back up, but it's actually just super dead. So I'm gonna head home. I need to get some rest. Like I could not hardly keep my head up. So two nights of really not getting much sleep. At home, get some rest. Uh, should be able to meet up with Joel either uh, tonight or tomorrow, and we'll be back up here tomorrow. But that's that. Kind of a bummer. Starting to feel like the place is slowing down. I hope it doesn't. I hope it doesn't trend that way every day. Hopefully, it'll pick back up. But the deer just haven't really been in here like they were the first few days. 
That's right. We'll be back. No, these things look hey, really throwing us off here. Ooh. Guys, we're buying more groceries. We just met with Steve from Born and Raised. Uh, decided let's throw some more food in this cooler. See how much food we can really take <laughs> with us into the woods. I want to do a hunt where we take nothing except for maybe some water. The only thing you can eat is what you kill. So you could have a couple tags, like some, you know, you can hunt grouse, deer tag, elk tag. I bet after day two, like expectations of big animals would go really downhill real fast. Like two points, dying. Then you can eat, you know. What do you think about my idea? Did you guys watch that? What happened to the Trent board? just rolls up in a brand new truck. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Fancy Pants with the new with the new kicks. Thought I'd show you guys how the other half lives. <laughs> he's, doing some, he's just doing some new boot goofing or what, buddy? Oh, good to see you hey, guys. Beautiful truck, buddy. Good to see you guys. Oh, long, bud. Oh, I know it. I got let's kick this thing off. Let's huh? do it. Beautiful. Can I smell the seats? Yeah. Real By the end of the month, you'll probably look a little different. I'll say this is the last day it's going to be shiny. <laughs> She's clean. Clean one owner. So, uh, well, well Bro Born and Raised just wants to say thanks for buying their merchandise and keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next year it'll just show up in a motorhome. I don't know. <laughs> just Literally a tour bus. Pictures of themselves on the side. <laughs> wrapped. Fully wrapped. wrapped. Fully wrapped. Welcome to the house, guys. It's time to shoot some arrows. For anybody who's curious, you know, it's crazy how many people ask about our gear. I, I usually just typically don't mention stuff, but... I've got the Easton Injection 330 Micro OD Deep Six. That's what I'm shooting. And uh, again, if you didn't watch yesterday's video, I am going to shoot my Pro Defiant, which is my bow from last year. We got 30 yards down Poverty Lane. See the target in the backyard up against a big mound of dirt. So if I do miss, it will have a, a backstop. Nobody seems to mind when I shoot my bow in my neighborhood. No one's really giving me issues, but I'm gonna send down, I don't know, about 10 arrows and see how we do starting now. And then I'm gonna go hit the gym. The first uh, the first arrow had a bad fletch, so I'm not counting on it flying very straight. It started to peel off, I must have shot it, but um, the second two felt really, really good. Let's see where our three shot group is, but I'm gonna go get a second, uh, third arrow, uh, cause of fletch, check this out. So there's 30 yards. That's the majority of my shots, my stand are gonna be about 30. 35 tops 24 24 to 30 about 25 to 35 we'll call it at the stand you see this one though i gotta i'm gonna run inside and get a different arrow but uh the first the second two felt really good feeling good that felt so good let's go check it out i gotta run good get in shape <laughs> i'm more like i'm in a hurry wow Gosh, I'm telling you guys, I shoot this bow so much better. Look at that. Yes, uh, I would say 30 is on the mark. Feeling pretty good about that. Really just wanted to get some arrows through the bow tonight. Just keep that confidence level high. Um, probably gonna shoot a couple more rounds, hit the gym, and then I'll show you guys some stuff when I get home. I'll be preparing for tomorrow's hunt, and Joel, Whitetail Fit Joel, should be here in about a couple hours. So we'll catch up with him in a minute. I don't know how to explain to you guys how excited I am right now. Finally hit dirt roads, headed in to what we like to call the swamp, uh, and we're gonna go set up camp. It's 4.30 in the p.m., evening before opening day, and all this preparation, all this planning, all this thinking is gonna be coming to a head tomorrow morning. Well, right now, really. Make sure I pack everything we need for the week, Got the right food. I'm gonna shoot some arrows tonight. Like we've said a number of times, you only get so many opening mornings in your lifetime. Take advantage of them. And tomorrow's another one. Ow! Guys, we got fruits. First blackberry of the season. I've got you one, Logan, but they're too good. Did you eat them all? No, just three. The three I picked. <laughs> we'll find more. See any uh, Rocky Mountain Elk? See any Rockies? You. you know what, guys? I'm just going to preface something right now. Tired of the sarcasm, tired of the jokes, okay? Don't we're hunting. Me. If you're smiling, we're not hunting. <laughs> we can have fun after. Now, you get serious. Put our game faces on, we hunt. Wow. 
Guy that has the tag is all serious. Right? Man, that's so Whoa. How pretty. Wow. How pretty is that? Year. Congratulations, <laughs> guys. How's it feel? Wow. Look at how Here's your pretty that is. So Don't many goodies. think, though, just because we got these, we're going to actually pack elk out with them. You're, that's, that's still your job. Oh, appreciate that. Appreciate that. I just want to look good. Too. Not going to use it. Not going <laughs> to use it. Not going to do it. Man, I'm excited to try Those these nice. out. Those are nice. Those we got nice. a little taste of these last year in Idaho when Trevor killed his bull. And uh, they were very comfortable. I don't know if, you know, whew, so far, that's not, that feels pretty nice. That's pretty nice. So, what my plan is, that's why I got the uh, dry earth one so you could see them better. Everybody signs the bugle that's all in the group for the state. And then at the end, we'll auction it off for a charity or veterans or something like that. Sweet. At the end of the uh, project, sometime. I so like dry earth looks good too. Dry earth mm -hmm. will be cool. Yeah. yeah. So I think that'll be really, really cool. Is he gonna go, Walden? Uh -huh. Guys, look what I found today. Uh, the Cabela's and Eugene. Shout out! They had one Carter Quickie left. So. I'm not gonna have to use that other one. Let's see how I shoot. Roosevelt Elk steps out at 60 yards. He's eight on one side and six on the other because he's crowned out. Oh, I'd probably let down and pass. Hunker in and take him home with us. I'll take it. Are we good? Yeah, good shot. All right. We're good. You're good to go hunt. Good? Yep, he's good. Money. Passed the okay. test. Anchored it, anchored it. Came off the mountain of Utah and just dumped everything in Casey's truck. So I'm reorganizing, making sure my pack is set up properly. Trent just gave me a wrap on the old Benchmade altitude knife in the first light Kydex case. So that is a custom wrap by Trent. Little Phelps cow call. Funny story. Going through TSA at the airport. They stopped me. They said, uh, sir, I believe you have a bat in your bag. I said, no, folks, it's an elk. Beagle tube, come on, let me go. Note to self, you guys pack beagle tubes through the airport. There's a chance TSA is gonna question you for bringing a bat. So I'm just dumping it all out on the ground and then we'll reorganize. Do you wanna wrap up a knife? Sure. So we're gonna unroll this uh, canvas cutter for the first time. No, not for the first time, because I got my gear in there. Put this bad boy up. Oh, what do we got in there? Ooh. Nice. <laughs> Silk blankets. <laughs> oh my Camo goodness. pillows. Oh, Jungle oh, bag. Your wife? Is that your polar bear blanket? So it comes with this foam pad, and this is coming straight from canvas cover. But I said it will be more comfortable if you put a sheet on here. I don't know why, but it'll keep it clean anyway. Okay, we'll go. So I'm we'll run all about that. keeping things clean, right? Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> we got a uh, twin fitted sheet. I prefer silk lug, but this is, this What's will do. What's the thread count on that? 200. It's pretty low. <laughs> pretty it's low. Pretty low. Pretty low. Pretty low. All you do, guys, you gotta okay. be. Oh my god. Mm, wow. You've got oh. to be kidding. Yahtzee. Wow. Jealousy's really coming out right now in the broker. It's at only 2.24 ounces, though. The R value, though, is pretty high. You yeah, want to roll yourself out here? Who's, it's, who's this gonna last longer now, Steve? You got a good feel point. Like they're at home. I'll, I'll give. Yeah. <laughs> Then we I'm, go not gonna lie. Bag. I, I'm not gonna oh. lie a bit. It oh. does look, it, it looks comfy. Little light it bag look on see, top. look it, now it doesn't stick. Oh, so you can slide. Pillow, like yeah, it. when you roll around in there, you know. Is that even a sleeping bag? What is that? Jungle bag. It's a jungle bag. What? Lightweight stuff, backcountry stuff, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How much, what's the I have a uh, list <laughs> I'll send you. The, what's the, can you send the me that PDF? Sheet. And then you can lay the polar bear blanket. The target zebra blanket. Oh, uh, that's actually six and a half pounds, so. <laughs> well, let's put this up. Oh, geez. Go figure. Yeah. Natural. It used to be an owner. It's a home away from home, really. Yeah. Nice job, okay. Nice boy. I did nothing. Canvas cutter. And I want one zipper there. Oh, you're well, staging there. your zips, aren't you? Boom, done. Staging your zips. You're just, you're in like Flynn. There it is. We could literally. That's bed for the next week. Yeah. We can throw you right down the river. Takes me probably what thirty, well maybe two minutes to roll that up. <laughs> nice work. What? <laughs> I was gonna nice say work. thirty seconds, and I was like, I'm not good at rolling stuff. <laughs> bed done. You got a little higher thread count. Uh, I think I'd be real bigger. math major over here. <laughs> Come here, bring it in. Come Jesus. on, Adam. Oh, are you gonna pick me up? 
Oh my God! Casey spent the night at our buddy's house last night, and they it was kind of in a what kind of environment was it? It was questionable. Questionable environment. So they decided to lock up the bikes, but left the house this morning and no key. So what's our play here, Steve? You've used sawzalls way more than I have. Yeah. Where's that? Right here. What do you want? Cut the lock. Can we lock or cable? Cable. Cable. Lock. Lock if you can well, cut the, it. Here, the yeah, cable, the but, well, the, you gotta cut the right side though. I'll cut both sides. I just feel like I didn't need those. Stickers. That's really hard. It's not moving, Steve. Yeah. It's just polishing it. Okay. Try so. the cable. Somewhere. Oh, yeah. Keep it burning, Steve. We're through. Uh, super glad we did that, but how many people did we just teach that you can cut through those cable locks? <laughs> Pretty easy. With generator. Nobody on, you YouTube. <laughs> nope. bikes. <laughs> Nobody on YouTube is going to look at that. Free the bikes! Rambo! Rambo! Stuck in swamp. God, I'll just call my buddy Nate. The guy which is cool with that. A little thing. Cutting board. There. Safety oh, kit. Inverter. There. Butane on that one. <laughs> this one, we got pots and pans. We got batteries. We got wipes. We got more propane. Hey, can I borrow one of those? Yeah. So I got wipes. <laughs> Real low on the TP. Hey, we're back. We're back. Oh man. So excited. Oh, I can't wait. But it went from extreme back to high. It's still level three over there, but yeah. Nothing's gonna close. No, no. Um, Veggies? Thank you. Yes, please. Is this keto? Yeah. Because I, I only do keto on um, then on Friday. Right. Thank you. Booyah. Yeah. Pretty good. It, 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 it tastes organic. Welcome back to the place and welcome to the Hush uh, photo shoot studio. I'm right here in the kitchen, of course. So let me show you guys these real quick. We haven't mentioned them, I don't think, in the vlog, but we designed and made custom Hush blaze orange hats. So there's a flat bill, a bent bill. Let me just run you through the differences. Typically, we had a, an embroidery hit on the side with Hush. Um, this year, we just had them do a loop label in the back. And check this out this is all custom tape everything is hunt fish hush on the inside so it was really hard to find like good quality um, blank blaze orange hats that we can embroider on we couldn't find them so we built some ourselves. Uh, b mac and the guys at evil eye really put in some time and effort to find a manufacturer that could make us a great fitting hat and it took a couple samples back and forth but i think they nailed it so if you guys are in need of a blaze orange hat this fall hopefully you see this before your hunt starts check them out at gethushin.com but i'm going to do some quick work on our website before joel gets here and then we're gonna have to pack and get ready and uh do all the business before we head up to camp tomorrow. So just want to give you guys a quick heads up. Check us out. All kinds of gear at gethushin.com.